It's my joy to be part of the band that heralds the emergence and publication uh, of our beloved colleague and teacher, Richard Rohr's uh, newest and most sublime book uh, on the universal Christ, uh, a book he's been living into for all his life. And I have to admit that when I first heard him burbling away excitedly about this book uh, uh, three years ago or so, when he first was making, making motions towards writing it, I rolled my eyes a little bit because the way I'd learned to hear the phrase universal Christ uh, usually meant that what you did was you take, took the person, Jesus Christ, and sort of extrapolated all the moral and theological principles and then put it out there as a generic commodity that, that could be discerned in all the religions of the world. So the particularity kind of disappeared. Uh, it was like uh, taking, taking Christ out of Jesus. And what Richard did, and it astonished me when I finally had a chance to, to look at the manuscript, is that he's starting from a whole new place in his understanding of the universal Christ. That for him, the Christ is not this extractable and transferable uh, theological or spiritual principle. It is the inside or the withinness of everything. He calls it the transcendent withinness that connects us to the universal through the particular in such a way that there's a constant kind of feedback loop between the universal and the, and the particular. And as a matter of fact, he, he did my heart good when I was reading uh, further in the introduction to the book the words, a merely personal God becomes tribal and sentimental. A merely universal God never leaves the realm of abstract theory and philosophical principle. But we learn to, when we learn to put them together, Jesus and Christ give us a God who is both personal and universal. And that's the extraordinary mystical reality that Richard is picking up and naming in this book in a way that rings and resonates with some beautiful things, the Tao, the inscape. I am the light shining within all things, as the Gospel of Thomas says, the inner light that the Quakers have known forever. Uh, and in point of fact, Teilhard de Chardin's beautiful sense that the consciousness is itself the inside of all outsides, the within of all withouts. And, and Richard draws beautifully the line between that that's both universal and totally intimate and, uh, and Christ. And furthermore, I think the other thing that he does that's so theologically liberating and groundbreaking is that he, he looks at this extraordinary relationship between the whole and the part. And of course, the old question between particularity and universality is one of those old philosophical saws. But Richard doesn't set them up as an either and or, you have one or the other. He creates them as a symbiotic feedback loop where the whole becomes completely present in the part and the part becomes completely present in the whole. So that the ocean is in the drop as well as the drop is in the ocean and it's a two-way street. It's a dynamic symbiotic unity which becomes the drive shaft of all reality. And that's what Richard calls the Christ. So it's our dynamic bridge between the universal and the utterly particular and intimate, between the infinite and the time-bound, in a way that not only honors both of them, but, but puts them in a, in a mutual bootstrapping whose final effect is love. This is big stuff. And, and I would beg you to, to look as, you've, as you finally have the, the possibility of holding this book in your hands, to sense it as the, the capstone so far of a beautiful and faithful life mystically lived and the mystical overflowing of a wisdom that I've seen coming from Richard with a force and a beauty, beauty that transcends even his own usual signature clarity. And, and brings us to a whole new place jointly. So thank you, and enjoy reading it. It will change your life, I guarantee.